How's it going everyone? I'm Adam Molina. Before the Jaybird X2s took over the world, I was using the wired Bose SoundSport headphones for exercise. So when they announced that they were making the jump to wireless, I have to admit, I was pretty excited. Are these the headphones to finally dethrone the Jaybird X2s? More importantly, should I be wearing these while playing Pokemon Go? Let's find out. In the box, you'll get the headphones, a small carabiner carrying case so you can easily carry them around, a micro USB charging cable, two extra pairs of Stay Here Plus tips, and the warranty information and instruction booklet. Upon taking these out of the box, I thought to myself, there's no way these are going to work. Though the actual ear tips that go in your ear haven't changed, the housing has. The wired sound sports were nice and thin, but these are huge and bulky. It makes sense considering all of the new Bluetooth components that have to go in there. Not to mention the battery that powers it all. When you put them on, they bulge out of your ears to the point where I was certain they were going to fall out. When I went running, I even brought a backup pair of headphones for when they inevitably fell out, but they weren't needed. Maybe these aren't as bulky as they look, or it could be because of the Stay Here Plus tips, but these didn't fall out at all. In terms of design, they're not too pretty, but they stay in my ears and they work, and that's all that really matters. On top of the right earbud is a single button responsible for pairing and powering them on, but you'll still have to use the inline mic and remote for playback controls. The control module and the wire are also nicely constructed and don't go flopping around as I run, which was the main reason why I didn't like the Jaybird Freedoms. They kept getting pulled out of my ear. As far as build materials go, these are made of a hard plastic, which is to be expected considering they're water and sweat resistant. Still, there's been a few reports of people having issues with sweat damaging the headphones. Bose has already stated they fixed the issue and will have an updated version of the headphones coming out in August, but if you've already bought the sound sports and they've been damaged, Bose will replace them for free. That said, my personal experience with these has been great, and I haven't had any issues at all. I wore these on my runs every day for about two weeks, and they still work perfectly. The SoundSport Wireless connect via Bluetooth to your phone relatively painlessly, and also have NFC if you have a compatible device. The range is pretty average at about 30 feet, and it works well enough. I did notice, however, that when running, there was very minimal skipping when I had my phone strapped to my left arm, roughly about four times in a week. When I had it strapped to my right arm, there was no skipping whatsoever. So pro tip, if you can't stand jumping music, keep your phone on the right side. Bose claims that the battery will get you around 6 hours of constant playback, which isn't anything special if we're being honest about it. Luckily the SoundSport Wireless did surprise me and I was able to max out playback time at 6 hours and 45 minutes. It's still not too great if you're playing music non-stop, but in real world usage that was still an entire week's worth of running for me. So this should probably go without saying because these are wireless, but I did all of my testing while running with the headphones connected to my phone. If you're looking for accuracy, you really shouldn't be looking into fitness headphones. That said, the bass isn't overdone here. Even though Bose definitely gave the low end some extra attention, I actually don't think they gave it enough attention. Songs sound great, but I personally would have liked to see a slightly more powerful low end with these. One of my favorite songs to run to is Gosh by Jamie XX, and although it sounds good for everyday listening, I was missing that more intense bass that pushes you while running. Unlike many of the other Bose products, the mids aren't given prominence here. As we already mentioned, all of that attention went to the low end. That's not to say that the mids aren't good, but they're not anything amazing. They're exactly what they need to be, which is great in my opinion. Vocals come through clear and instruments are definitely decent, but you're not going to get a great amount of detail out of them. The highs were also kind of pulled back, which is great because I don't want any piercing sounds in my ears. The cymbals and hi-hats of Tighten Up by the Black Keys never sounded harsh at all. So if it's not clear by now, here it is. These are my new favorite pair of exercise headphones. They sound slightly better than most fitness headphones on the market, and most importantly, they stay in my ears no matter what I do but my favorite thing about these has to be the price. $150 isn't cheap, but it's super competitive when you consider one, how expensive premium fitness headphones usually are, two, the fact that Bose never competitively prices anything, and three, how good these headphones actually are. If you're really worried about the sweat damage, I would say wait until August when the new models come out and then definitely pick a pair of these up ASAP. We're giving the Bose SoundSport Wireless an 8.5 out of 10. And that's about it for our review of the SoundSport Wireless. Thanks for watching. If you want to know more about these particular headphones, check out the full written review over at soundguys.com. While you're here, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already, and sign up to our monthly newsletter so you can stay up to date with all the news, reviews, and audio news here at SoundGuys. Links to all of that down there in the description. I'm Adam Molina. I'll see you later.